Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, for all AI infrastructure, we all desire to have uh, 10 times, or I mean 10 fold efficiency increment. But the number 10 here uh, is more like a symbol uh, than the precise uh, metrics. Today, we will together to explore and find some way to achieve this goal. Uh, unfortunately, my co-speaker could not make it today, so she has to uh, speak on the screen. Okay, uh, a moment. Uh. Okay. Okay, first of all, let me introduce ourselves. I'm the product manager of Cloud Native and I'm skilled at network storage GPU area. And Peter uh, is the cloud native dev lead. And he is employed by Docker and he is an uh, open source advocate. Uh, first of all, as we look at the background, um, as we know, huge opportunities comes to AI infrastructure. But at the same time, uh, we will face a lot of challenges, such as utilization of efficiency is not, very, uh, is not very high, and the GPU supply demand is in balance. And at the same time, technical and operating experience is also change. Um, on one hand, GPU supply keeps shortage, especially as we know in China. On the other hand, uh, we can see the GPU utilization is under 50% uh, at the most of the time. Uh, so increased efficiency is uh, very important for us. It's equal to saving money. As we know, GPU cards is very important uh, and it's expensive. Okay, let's we look at the uh, reasons of low efficiency. Um, Network and storage bottleneck will affect the training efficiency and the GPU scattering and allocated is not optimal enough now in some AI scenario. Also, a GPU frequently fought with the GPU time as well. <clears throat> So today, our sharing is based on the uh, success story, DRAM. Um, you can try the URL on the uh, left corner. And DRAM is as a computing hub for AIDC across uh, China and empower uh, tens of AIDC, both on SaaS and promises. Um, it's based on Kubernetes power to provide AI computing to end users. And we do get a significant increase of utilization and saving cost in our real practice. Uh, we can see the numbers. Uh, GPU cost uh, has saving 48% uh, and the GPU average utilization has improved from 25% to 55%. Okay, uh, in the Duran solution, we uh, do the optimization different layers. Uh, we can from the uh, infrastructure and the AI platform, including the GPU MIG and the GPU acceleration. Uh, of course, including the model service, such as Olama, Lingo, and uh, Chitam. So today, our journey starts. Um, um, it starts with different enhancements uh, to our target of 10 times increments, uh, including the hardware utilization, scheduling, uh, unification, and management and the survey. And uh, today, I will uh, into introduce the hardware part and the utilization part, and the next, Peter will introduce the other parts. Okay, let's move to the hardware part. Um, network is very important aspect in the infrastructure. So uh, we do the GPU acceleration from two, uh, um, two, two phases. First one is the GPU direct IDMA to accelerate the GPU and uh, um, IDMA transmit. 
uh, as we know, uh, the GPU is a specific technology um, from the card and uh, uh, the GPU card and RDMA uh, uh, interface by parsing the CPU uh, in order to improve the uh, transmit, uh, transmit performance and uh, latency. And uh, the second part is about the spread pool, which is an um, open, source, open source project. It supports different CNIs to work with ROC and IB. Uh, as we know, in the AI a scenario, ROC and IB is very necessary. And based on the MacWilliam and IPVLAN CNI, it can uh, the part can communicate by ROC. And based on the SRV CNI, to, it can communicate by uh, ROC2. And based on the SRV CNI, it also can communicate by uh, infinite band. Of course, we can see the different performance from IP and uh, ROC and IB protocol. Of course, IB is the best. OK, um, the another uh, improvement is about the GPU topology of value scheduling. Um, port allocated with RDMA HCA affinity with same PCIe switch uh, because, uh, as we know, GPU uh, in the different PCIe switch uh, has a different performance. Uh, in the same PCIe switch, um, it will have the best performance. So, spread pool based on the DI to dynamic select uh, the RDMA device with best uh, topology. It will define the DI uh, scheduling policy according to the policy. Uh, the port uh, scheduling will automatically uh, to choose the, uh, the 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 network interface. So it can improve the performance performance. And the next is the, about the storage. Um, as most of the company user, it has uh, existing storage. Uh, and uh, the AI platform usually uh, built on the Kubernetes. So if they want to use the existing storage, for the, the CSI enabling is necessary, uh, such as the external storage, uh, HPC storage, um, for example, the Lustre, BGFS, HDFS. And the next part, we can see the um, storage scenario. The most important is about the data set. Um, in this scenario, uh, mostly it needs uh, read-only read -only storage. Uh, so there's a solution for uh, uh, S3 plus uh, JuiceFS caching and the labeling uh, using to using to write to uh, S3. And the second uh, important scenario is about the trigger point saving, uh, because the, uh, when the trick point is writing, the GPU is, uh, is idle. Uh, so if we can reduce the tracking point time, um, it, can, uh, saving, uh, it can improve the GPU usage performance. So in this uh, in this case, um, the storage needs high I/O throughput, and uh, we suggest uh, to use the uh, distributed storage uh, because uh, some model uh, framework is um, the right checkpoints pieces in the node. So when it's recovery back, it needs to uh, read read the checkpoint from different nodes. And the other uh, data, such as the intermediate data, uh, it can use the local storage, such as uh, one install, which is an open source project too. And in the model image and the inference history, it can be stored in S3. Uh, in this part, we can see that SprintD as an open source project, which is backed by Alexia or just basis, uh, it can do the acceleration, uh, the data loading and the caching. And this is a quick demo. Uh, we can see that we define a data site uh, 
for the Lama 3 dataset uh, in remote main I.O. It can, uh, will cache the Lama 3 inside cluster memory. When you load the model dataset again, it will get a 10 times faster speed. OK, then let's we move to the utilization part. How to maximize the utilization? There's a lot of challenge. Uh, first of all is the workload mismatch, uh, such as we run a small uh, model on a high-end GPU. And a uh, part request occupy a GPU but not using it. Uh, for example, occupied by notebook but just coding. Uh, uh, so one is many small task brings resource fragment, uh, fragments. So uh, there's a lot of GPU fragments. And the last one is the training recovery from the value. Uh, we will talk more about from the foresight. So how to recover from GPU failure? When GPU failure uh, happens, usually the job and the part will crash on hand there. The part running on the bad GPU may stuck there forever if we don't do anything. So first of all, we need to detect when it happens. Uh, we can detect the uh, film from uh, by using the tool NVIDIA DCGMA dialog tool. Uh, just like the snapshot on the left. Um, it's find the PCIe bus film, and we can also find some clue from framework uh, logging. So secondly, we need to uh, reschedule the part to a good GPU nodes and resume the training from the last checkpoint. Then we can do it automatically recover from GPU failure. The next, um, the next is about the optimal GPU feed. Um, as uh, as we just uh, mentioned, in a mixed uh, cluster with both high end and low end GPUs, it's better to tell different work uh, workloads between them to avoid waste. Training requests a high uh, NV link bandwidth, so we should choose a 100. Meanwhile, for inference, uh, 1490 it give you best cost performance. Um, on the right, um, using DIA to define different uh, GPU scale like A100 and A6000, so that on the left, the port can specify to run on one type of the GPU card. And the next, uh, is to the vGPU. We can use vGPU to increase its efficiency. From the left uh, side, one application and one, uh, on one GPU, but owning 20% usage. GPU is, uh, is available and is in low usage. But if we put more applications on these GPUs, we can get more usage duration. So the GPU can work in high uh, usage. It can improve the uh, percentage of usage. And uh, now another case, scientists uh, usually use Jupyter Notebook for daily work. But most of the time, they just code in there and uh, or process data, GPU is idle. In this case, we also need uh, to split uh, the GPU and share it. So we can see that uh, this job is claim one GPU, but most of the time is coding or non-GPU works. So we do some, uh, we find some ways to uh, out below um, to auto shut down of idle uh, notebook and using Arena CI to submit a, a, sync, a sync job on demand. Um, in order to realize the uh, splitting uh, GPU at will and overcome it of GPU memory. The next um, solution one is about uh, NVIDIA MIG. It's um, a physical partition uh, and it has good performance, but not so flexible 
because it's f fixed scale and uh, it needs to predefine the uh, the size of the of of the partition. Um, there's an enhancement using DIA here. It means if we create a part, DIA can split the uh, GPU image on demand as that time instead of split beforehand. And uh, okay, the second solution is about the Harmi, uh, which is a CNCF project. The logo is very delicious, you know. Um, you can split uh, the GPU at will from 1% to 99%. It's very flexible. Uh, moreover, you could ever put to uh, 18. Uh, you can see this. You can see this. Uh, there's uh, only one GPU card and uh, 80 uh, G, 80 G GPU. Um, but two parts can request both uh, ATG at the same time and use OSHA HBM at different time. When two parts use both ATG swap happens, system memory, memory will help. And we can see more uh, details in this uh, topic, which was presented by Zhang Xiao. And next, let's move to the bin pack. Mm -hmm. uh, in the left corner, uh, we can see there's five application and the four has scheduled in node one and node two. And there's a new application uh, five, but there's no uh, resource for, for it to schedule. Uh, unless we can move application then to the node one, then the application it can be scheduled to another two. There are three, uh, three solutions for this uh, pin pack scheduling. The first one is the Kubernetes scheduling plugin, not the resource. Uh, we can define a, a very uh, node with um, higher allocated uh, GPU with uh, high weights uh, than others. So uh, the node will be uh, first, uh, be, will be first allocated uh, to to use up the GPU resource, and the second solution is the volcano. Uh, volcano has a group config of okay, uh, uh, to enable the beam pack, and the third solution is a uh, Hami. Uh, it can do the vGPU level beam pack. Uh, for example, it can put uh, 0.5 vGPU and 0.3 vGPU pulse on the same physical GPU. Okay, the next is uh, going to the test queue and the scheduling, and uh, Peter will introduce it for us. Okay, thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you, Chu Ping. Ah, my turn now. This is Peter. So I will cover the lab part. For task management, um, one of the challenge uh, for task management is to running, we call it the collocation, uh, running the critical and non-critical workload together in the same place. There will be a noisy neighborhood and uh, competing for resource, fighting for resource essential. So we can resolve this, relieve this by uh, setting priority class list here, uh, job priority in queue, CPU burst, uh, etc., fail scheduling, etc. So let's go to more details. Okay, here, um, when a new task coming in, uh, which is a higher priority, he could jump the queue and uh, um, and preempt the other uh, lower priority jobs. So we can achieve this by three ways. First one is the poor priority. It will uh, preempt and by killing others. Or using queues, a uh, world local priority class. Queue is another uh, Kubernetes stake project. Uh, so it could get more privilege when in queuing or uh, cohort uh, sharing. Or the, uh, the third way is using Harmi. We have heard about a lot uh, these two days. Uh, the low priority job will just be suspended without being killed. So these three ways. 
And another case is to sharing resource between lamp spaces. We can do quota over commit. We talk a lot of uh, over commit today, uh, but uh, it's a quota over commit uh, using Kubernetes scheduling plugin. Um, total, uh, assuming total we have a 10 GPU, but we can give more than 10 to uh, two teams so they can borrow uh, from others and reclaim back when it need, needed uh, is flexible. Also, HPA, um, okay, stuff, uh, everybody familiar with that. Uh, okay, borrow and reclaim back. And uh, last part for uh, task management is the first scheduling. Um, it, we, uh, we will leverage the Volcano uh, DRF plugin to achieve it. So I will skip detail for the uh, time sake. Okay, next part, uh, unification. Our goal is to unify the container and VM together and unify different types of GPU together. First for VM. Oh, it's Kubecom here. Who worries about VM? But VM is still alive in this world. So do you know how to enable GPU for Kubevert? We, we, we are familiar, maybe every, a lot of people are familiar with Kubevert, but Kubevert with the GPU, how to do that? Okay, so three steps. One, GPU operator. We use GPU operator a lot, but GPU operator also support, both support container and VM. Okay, uh, then uh, we will tell Kubevert config, configuration CR to add the, our specific uh, GPU device. Just like here, uh, the A10 and the uh, PCIe uh, information. So last step is to create a VM, then request uh, uh, NVIDIA GPU just like shown on the right part. Okay, so that we can have a hybrid GPU cloud with VM and container together. The next part is the, uh, if we have a different brand of GPU, MPU, etc., or different uh, high-end NVIDIA car or low-end together, so uh, we try to put them into the same platform. Okay, so we will talk about different uh, layers. Uh, first is the code. Um, mostly, uh, some GPU, uh, MPU vendor, they provide CUDA compatible uh, interface. So we don't have to change our Python code, and then can, we can run both the NVIDIA GPU or the other vendors. But the GPU vendor always require different library. So we have to, it's a little bit small, so we have to change different base image when running on different GPU vendor. And the port uh, workload YAML, they uh, request different uh, keyword when they request the GPU, like uh, different vendor have their own name in the port YAML. So uh, in our platform, we try to make it easier for user uh, people have, uh, can uh, just drop down from a drop down box to select uh, what kind of GPU uh, we are running and it will fear, uh, use the right image and fear the uh, keyword in the YAML automatically. Maybe in the future, it could be more uh, clever just like maybe, uh, maybe parse the image or parse the code to find the right GPU in the future. Okay, the next part is the management. Uh, how to manage the, uh, the management efficiency. There are two parts, uh, organization management and operation management. It's um, maybe 50% technical and 50% non-technical. Okay, so um, more about the policy, uh, the, the process and something. First, manage the organization by setting their quota and privilege and isolation. 
second part is the uh, managing the billing uh, and managing the cost. Okay. Fine ops, uh, a lot of people are familiar with this term. They provide a methodology for us for four steps. Observe, observe the cost, then adjust the execution, uh, so far and so forth, and do again. Okay. Uh, we have an open source uh, project to help us to do the observation. Open course is one of the choice. It shows the cost statistic for different namespace and calculate their efficiency score. Okay, here it is the uh, memory score and CPU score there. So for our own team, uh, we have set up a bottom line rule. For example, uh, our own container, our own workload should reach uh, uh, this score uh, unless the CI will fail. So, um, but in the operation model, people can use uh, open cost to get more visibility and achieve the fine ops easily. Okay, for tenants, uh, tenants and teams, we set up quota for namespace and queue. Then to achieve shading, we can try to use cohort. It is a Q concept to cohort to share uh, between two teams to borrow and then cut out from each other. All right. Uh, for the another management tips is to low base view. We can separate uh, operator and scientists uh, into two kinds of because they care about different things. Infrastructure people always focus on those things, inventory, monitor, et cetera. So we put a separate, separate view for them and those things information as the first grade citizen. For scientists, they just care about their own code, their notebook, their training, data set. So they, their user interface will, um, will provide what they want to get here. Okay, the most interesting part here uh, for how to boost the model serving. So finally, we are approaching tenfold, right? <laughs> By shading a lot of things. We talk about shading GPU. We talk about shading um, quota between namespace. We talk about shading uh, collocation, right? And shading VM and container. Shading a lot of things so that we can uh, to save cost, right? And to reduce the labor effort to save time. Okay, the last part is about serving. For uh, serving, we have a lot of pens. It's complex, right? Um, it's for the scientists, it's too difficult. And uh, the model download is slow, and some idle model, it's just running but no request, right? So this is uh, some pen points. Uh, first, Serving framework, I will start starting with uh, Triton. It's very easy to use. I think a lot of people use it. And um, it supports many backends, like uh, VLM as, as well, and OpenVINO, et cetera. So I like it because it supports uh, both new LLM and traditional uh, vision models. So. Uh, additionally, we, pro we implement a Triton operator on the left bottom. We provide an operator so make it more cloud native. We can space just like it's shown. Uh, it's an inference CR. We can specify uh, the backend using a VLLM. Then we give the model path. Okay, maybe in a PVC. So uh, it will run Triton and uh, serve this model. And question comes. Okay, the model parts, the green color, how we can put the model file? We put it in host parts, or we put it in just in PVC. Now we have an OCI artifact volume, just RFI in the latest release. Uh, so, we can just put this model into an image. This is a pure image without like a base image like Ubuntu or BusyBox, et cetera. 
the image only have the model weights. So this is the, uh, the right part is the container, uh, is the port. You can use this image as a volume. This is the OCI volume new feature. And it has spent 10 years. Finally, it come into the Kubernetes. You, you, you see, you say uh, the team raised this uh, request in 10 years ago. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right, so you will have another question. How we can build this image, this uh, model image, okay? Here is another open source, uh, open source project, OIS. OIS is your friend, how to do that, here's a quick demo. I have uh, Nama 3 uh, models in my laptop, just like here. Then you can easily use ORS uh, to build an image. The image name is in a, a, in a blue column. Uh, previously, so he, this is the basic usage of ORS. But previously, uh, when this image is created, oh, sorry. When the image is created, uh, we can pull, we, we have to pull it into a local disk. Then we can mount it again to the port. It's not so convenient. So when we have uh, OCI volume, we can just mount it directly to the port. So we can combine them together to a very smooth process. All right, the last, uh, another part is Unama. Onama, uh, it's, uh, I, I, like, I like it very much. It's handed without Docker dependency. Uh, it can serve model easily. Um, another interesting thing is it has uh, some kind of like Docker file. It's called model file. So uh, we can just like Onama, uh, just like Docker build to build the Onama image. And uh, my friend, Nico, uh, she provide a Kubernetes operator for Onama here. So she will speak uh, and introduce about the Onama operator uh, in this room later today. Okay, uh, last, finally, uh, Lingo. Uh, Lingo is a new project. Unfortunately, only 100 starts, but I, I, I like it a little bit uh, because um, Lingo is an AI gateway. It's pretty and very slim. I love it so much because it's scale to zero and scale from zero. If you want to uh, serve a model and achieve the scale to zero, uh, you may choose Canative, right? Or Istio. But it's heavy. So the AI gateway is another solution out. Here is a quick demo. Uh, let me make it quick. We serve two models. Uh, one is the embedding model, mini LM. Another is the Mistral uh, 7 bit. We s okay, first we can see the, uh, they are all zero, right? Ready zero slash zero. Then we send a request to the small model, okay, the embedding model. Then the mini LM, the small model, being active, ready one. Then we check the Kubernetes event. It's scale up from uh, to one from zero. Then uh, if it's idle, no request, no more request, maybe maybe more than one minute. So it will scale down again back to zero. You can see from the event. And if we send a request to the big model, to the Mistral 7-bit, and Mistral 7-bit will be wake up. So we can run those models into single GPU if they are not very busy, and we can reuse and increase the efficiency. All right, hope this projects and shading can boost your AI journey to achieve the tenfold to 10 times improvement. And uh, thank you very much. Um, do we have a question time? 
Okay, uh, just find me here if you have any question. Thank you.